Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to a brand new News Roundup video. And today we've got some very interesting stuff to go over, including a new casting for James Gunn's Superman. We're also going to get into some very, very interesting stuff regarding lanterns. You guys know me. I just want to go head over heels into anything lanterns. And actually, with what we have to work with here, it does give me a glimpse at some other things that could be happening based off of what we've learned recently. We're getting into some details for how... Al Jordan and John Stewart and also Gunn has liked some stuff with regards to Bruce Wayne and Talia Al Ghul which kind of connects to the larger age discussion that we're going to have a little bit later in this video among several other things as you guys know these videos are time stamped if you want to skip around feel free to do so but I do recommend checking out the whole video so you're up to date with all of my takes and I do apologize that I've got to a couple of these stories late um, I would have covered this sooner but I'm currently dealing with some wisdom tooth uh, issues that I'm having right now, but the reason why I can kind of speak normally is because I'm dosed up on painkillers and anti-inflammatories, and anyone who knows about some toothache stuff, uh, it's a whole bunch of BS, so you know exactly what I'm going through right now, and my god, I hope it doesn't get worse going into next week. Uh, but with that being said, we're going to soldier on, plow through this video, and start off with, of course, the new casting for Superman. So, we've known for quite a while that, okay, we're, we're leaning heavily into the journalistic side of this film, uh, which is something I'm very much so looking forward to. I feel like we haven't had it from Superman in live action in quite a while, excluding, I guess you could say, Superman and Lois. But... As for a Superman movie, seeing Rachel Brosnahan's Lois and Corin Sweat's Clark really get into the Daily Planet, knowing that we have the fantastic Wendell Pierce playing Perry White, Scarlett Gazondo as the good old Jimmy Olsen. But there is another character that we've been expecting to see cast for a long time, and that is Steve Lombard. And over the past couple of days, people are like, oh, could, could this actually be the case? Uh, you know, it seems that we're getting some evidence that Beck Bennett could be Steve Lombard. Then you see this photo come out of uh, James Gunn with some Superman cast and crew there. You can see Nathan Fillion's Guy Gardner. You can see even Metamorpho there and Skylar Gazondo's Jimmy Olsen. But you can also see Beck Bennett there with a very Steve Lombard mustache and then lo and behold we had some more reports come out and james gunn himself said welcome to the dcu steve lombard so we do have our steve lombard i know some of you may be like who who the heck steve lombard why is he an important character why should i really care about him i know many of you know who steve lombard is but long story short the reason why i'm excited for his character is that uh, it, it kind of depends on how he's portrayed, but he's kind of like that class clown, if you will. Imagine like a guy in your office, if you were a reporter like Lois and, you know, Clark and whatnot, but you kind of have that guy who may be portrayed a bit douchey. Sometimes he's been portrayed as kind of bullying Clark a little bit. Now, I'm not saying he's like proper like bullying, 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 but he might be that guy who, who maybe goes a bit too far sometimes. And, you know, if only he knew that this guy was the Man of Steel. So you just know that Gunn is probably gonna, you know, mine some gold there. I'm sure he's gonna be used as quite a comical, comedic character, which is why, you know, he's cast a comedian. He is an actor, a comedian, he's been on SNL, and to be honest, I haven't seen so much of his stuff, but obviously before making this video, I went on YouTube, searched him up, wanted to see some of the things that he's been in, but also I saw like a best of Saturday Night Live uh, compilation of stuff, and I do, I am quite happy with what I'm seeing. He seems to be a good casting for the role and we, we've known for a long time anyway that Gunn was looking for a comedian for the role of Steve Lombard and now we finally got it confirmed so gonna be really interesting to see how the dynamic between him Clark and Lois and Jimmy even is what kind of scenes they're actually gonna share uh, how funny it could be in moments of when he might be kind of going a bit too hard on Clark or Jimmy and then you just have Clark kind of get maybe a bit irritated and it's again just if only this guy knew who he was kind of messing around with. But I do think I would like to see uh, a multifaceted 
Steve Lombard, who actually is a nice guy at the same time, and maybe Clark manages to break those walls down, rather than just like a straight up annoying douchebag 24-7. I, I think Gunn can actually play with both sides of the ballpark there. Now, before we get into the more meatier stuff of this video, there's not too much else going on with Superman outside some extra uh, stand-in calls, which, you know, anyone's it's anyone's guess as to what's happening here. They're looking for military types because they want military slash police in the background or something. Uh, they want a bunch of extras who are okay with getting soaked and completely wet, which will get you an extra 20 bucks <laughs> um, if you're okay with that. And obviously, I don't want to dissect this because it could be about anything, but it kind of takes me back to... Are we going to see something soon? Because honestly, they're shooting on location in, I, I would say, like a couple of areas around about now and, you know, in the foreseeable future where I can't imagine that they, they, they're going to top everything up like they did at downtown Macon. So I don't know if there's going to be any, like, paps around to kind of get a shot of what could be going on there. We're going to have to wait and see. Obviously, if there's anything crazy, I will be making a video about it, and I'm sure you would know about it already and expect a video from me. But are we going to see anything? I, I don't know. It's, it's, it's like this perpetual state of we could see anything any minute now, even as I'm uploading this video. But every day goes by, and then a the week goes by, and James Gunn has managed to successfully keep any leaks from kind of getting out in terms of seeing what Metamorpho looks like, Guy Gardner. And I know that they've been filming uh, with Guy Gardner and Metamorpho with extras behind the scenes. I I've kind of heard that through the grapevine. But again, uh, they've they've kept it all completely locked down and uh, nobody's got any decent looks at that. But I guess make sure you stay subscribed to the channel or subscribe if you haven't done so already because you guys know I'll be on it from any micro information to big big info that we need to break down. And by the way, at this point in the video, if you're still watching, would really appreciate a like if you're enjoying the content so far. But now, ladies and gentlemen, we very much so need to talk about uh, what, what's come out over the past couple of days with regards to lanterns, because it kind of goes over something that we heard a while ago. But for this particular outlet to be claiming this, and as of when making this video, and it's been like a couple of days, Gun still hasn't debunked it, which I find interesting, because I feel like this is the kind of thing he would shoot down if it wasn't true whatsoever, and Lanterns is being cooked in the background, so this is kind of information that I do tend to believe, and again, with what we've known from the DCU Leaks Reddit, they were absolutely spot on. If you guys remember my retrospective video recently going over old DCEU, uh, DCU Leaks from over a year ago, and they got Damon Lindelof to Ozark's Chris Mundy to Tom King, um, correct, ages ago, and also some of the information that we're about to talk about right now that has resurfaced. So I want to talk about this because it's interesting when you it kind of comes to Hal Jordan, John Stewart, a new theory surrounding what this ancient horror could be, I guess, and how this plays in, I guess, with the overall ages of heroes that have existed and already existed, as Gunn famously has said, in the DCU, and actually how this connects to maybe even the casting for Batman um, coming up with actually something Gunn has actually liked and some eagle-eyed uh, fans out there have noticed that he's done that. So, without me prefacing this for much longer... Here we have from Nexus Point News, exclusive. DC Studios' Lanterns ramps up with new casting and production details. So initially, they talk about following Gunn's confirmation on the creative team behind Lanterns, such as uh, obviously Chris Mundy, Damon Lindelof, and Tom King's involvement. But we can report that the series is currently eyeing to start shooting in quarter one of 2025 in the United Kingdom. If production goes smoothly, this could set up a, a release uh, for 2026. Now, this makes sense with if you guys remember that report uh, from quite a while back, but with the promise of the 8-10 to 10 year plan of the DCU, we had it from Variety saying Warner Brothers Discovery is giving DC Studios a primary production hub at its UK-based TV and film studio Warner Brothers Studios Leavesden, and where they're expanding the location by more than 50% capacity in 10 additional sound stages to the point of where it will be an additional 400 thousand square feet of production and support space like that is just um as we know the future hub and home of 
DC Studios Productions. So, Lanterns is going to be knocking around my area of the pond, which is uh, pretty interesting. Maybe I'm going to have to get my Boba Olsen uh, mode on so I can get some snapshots of Lanterns. <laughs> We're going to have to wait and see. But this is really interesting. Um, I think this makes sense. Whenever I've talked about Lanterns, whenever I've kind of done my, like, guesstimations, I've always said, with the ever since, like, the reshuffling, that is, of the DCU slate, that's been evident with Waller now coming out after uh, Peacemaker Season 2 when it was originally described as a Peacemaker Season 1.5. I've said it makes sense for Lanterns not to be kind of making extreme headway this year, but rather next year. So those DCU leaks were accurate with who they claimed was working on the show well over a year ago. So that gives you an idea of that creative team have been working on it and been known to be working on it that long. So think how much progress they've made, and we've still got, like, the remainder of this year, so, like, they're gonna easily, I think, be ready to start shooting early, early 2025. So I think this information is very, very accurate, and yeah, that should really give us a 2026 release. Now, just to address, could it release in 2025? Because I know some people will be asking that. I, I just don't think so. It's not something to remotely hold your breath about because, you know, I, I think of something like Peacemaker, which started filming in January of 2021. Now, they uh, filmed for like around just over four and a half months. I think it was like 131 days in total and wrapped on July 11th of 2021. But then, you know, it, it released as soon as January of 2022. So I think that's kind of a rough, a very rough template of how I imagine Lanterns going. Now, I, I use Peacemaker because even though I can't guarantee you that's exactly how the time frame's gonna work, just like Peacemaker to Lanterns. No, but I do imagine Lanterns to be a, a somewhat limited series that is around eight episodes like Peacemaker. We'll probably go for a similar production of four and a half-ish plus months, and then we'll have a similar post-production time to that of Peacemaker and where it launched in the following January. So again, Peacemaker starting filming in January 2021, wrapping by July, but then premiering its season in January of 2022, you can imagine, okay, we're hearing about Lanterns in 2025, let's just pretend it was January uh, 2025, filmed for a few months up until July, boom, post-production, could release January, February, March of 2026. That that feels like how it's going to go, but I could be wrong. That is really just a rough estimation of how things could work out. But I do think an eight-episode model is really good. I prefer it. I know some people want more episodes, but at the same time, that's where you can get kind of fillery-esque stuff. I've always said that eight to 12 episodes is like very plot-driven. You're not really getting too much wasted time in there. Every episode is very engaging. It's straight to the point. Whereas, you know, the days of network television of 18 to 22 to 24 episodes, I mean, you guys know how dragged out that can get, my God. Now, again, I think my max would be 15 episodes, but if this is like eight episodes to 12, I think Gunn will stick around there, like the Peacemaker episode count. And I think Peacemaker season two is a similar amount of episodes. So I would just say that I'm projecting that onto Lanterns as well. But very interestingly now, I mean, I thought that, that all of that was interesting, but now we need to talk about uh, the ages because Nexus Point News go on to say here, it's been previously reported this series will feature a veteran Hal Jordan and a younger Jon Stewart, first reported by DCU Leaks. Shout out to them because again, at least, you know, when it comes to DCU st DC Studios Leaks, they've been so spot on. And if you don't believe me, watch the videos where I've literally gone back in time and seen what they got right way before it was even officially announced or confirmed by Gunn. Uh, we're hearing new casting details corroborating this report. So, casting is about to ramp up with DC Studios looking for white actors between 43 and 49 years old for Howard Jordan and black actors between 27 and 35 years old for Jon Stewart. And I'm just going to maintain my thoughts here. I quite like the idea of this because whatever you think, you need to understand the context of this universe is one that I always nail into your guys' heads. We're hitting the ground running. Heroes have existed. You already know that with Batman, for crying out loud, having Damian Wayne and a Bat family when we first see him in the DCU. Like, he's obviously gone through a couple of Robins at the very minimum to have Damian Wayne coming along. So... 
you know, we have Mr. Terrific and other characters flying around out there. Superman's in this continuity isn't like one of the first superheroes, actually. He's actually more of a newer hero compared to some of these other veterans out there. He's established, but he's not a veteran like Hal Jordan is. So Hal Jordan, you know, arguably, and I'm willing to bet, was a hero way before Clark Kent was or revealed himself to the world as Superman. So really, Hal Jordan is probably more around the experience or years of active heroic service, if you will, uh, likened to that of Batman. I've always said Batman, at the very least, in the DCU with where we're at in this story, with what they're adapting with the Brave and the Bold, is 8 to 12 years in. Probably 10 to 12 years at a minimum. So if they're looking for a 43-year-old actor to 49-year-old, yeah, I think Hal has probably been active as a Green Lantern for roughly eight to 10 years. Um, probably, yeah, similar to the Batman timeline that I've been saying. Now, I've also maintained that with, you know, Jon Stewart being 27 to 35, more of uh, an age to reflect, I guess, David Corrinsweard. I think that's very deliberately done because by the time we'll see Lanterns, David Corrinsweard will be getting onto like 33, 34-ish, kind of something like that. So they're going to be similar ages. And, you know, people are already speculating will Jon Stewart going into the DCU as things unfold be kind of like the Justice League Lantern that we're going to have um, rather than that of Hal Jordan, who's kind of been, you know, already active in the world for a long time. Not like an old, old man lantern, not at all. Like 43 is an old man. I mean, just look at Jensen Ackles for crying out loud. And he's got a rookie lantern, John Stewart, tagging alongside him, being in this true detective style, as James Gunn said, influenced lantern show. And they're going to uncover this ancient, terrifying horror together. Now, a lot of people are also thinking... And I actually quite dig this idea. We have entertained it before, and I think I'm going to go a bit more in depth in a separate video soon, which I've been saying for a long while now. But given how Jordan's age, being 43 to 49 years old, could the ancient terrifying horror that they're stumbling across actually be something like Parallax? And the main reason for that being, if this how Jordan has already been around, you know, for a good like 8 to 10, 11, 12 years, being 43 to 49-ish years old, you know, let's just say he's had his ring since his 30s, and now he's already like 45, or whoever the actor is, uh, or whatever the universe age is going to be, because it's not like the character has to reflect the actor's age, but you could argue that with him this far in, in the Lantern show, with Gunn Sang and Peter Safran heavily emphasizing that they're stumbling across an ancient horror um, on Earth, and this series is very important to the DCU. That is, by the way, one of the only projects I've ever heard that being said about, um, other than, I guess, Superman kicking the universe off. Lanterns is very important because it's whatever happens in the story with uncovering this ancient threat reverberates out into the overarching story of the DCU. So possibly, you know, what is the overarching big bad and stuff like that. Well, with how Jordan, long story short here, or long story long more like, um, being this far into his career, you could say that it's not too soon to really do parallax. Because I've heard some people say that, oh, it's too soon, but readjust your perspective, and it's like, to the character, it isn't really. And if you think about it, Parallax is kind of an ancient horror because he's like this, you know, freaking demonic, um, you know, being that actually kind of goes back, if I, if I have this correctly, to more or less the dawn of time. So, like, he's an ancient horror, the kind of Loki embodiment of fear... And if how Jordan kind of ran into that and it's like something that needs to be dealt with, that could actually be something really interesting, knowing, and I, I'm going to hammer this in again, knowing that whatever happens during the events of this series by the finale, the consequences of the show or what happens to the characters and what they stumble across is going to quite literally ripple like skimming a stone out into other projects of the DCU. So maybe other heroes might need to kind of band together to deal with whatever, you know, parallax situation that might arise. And it's not something that has to be done immediately. It could be more of an influence over how, um, again, with it reverberating out into the overarching story of the DCU and so other projects, you could see Hal being more influenced and, um, you know, p possibly more of a threat. Um, and it could be a cool arc with the actor and could also propel the younger rookie, Hal Jordan, uh, not Hal Jordan, John Stewart, to 
kind of take over as the more prominent younger lantern on whatever the current status quo is with the Justice League roster. I don't want like Hal Jordan to be wiped out or anything immediately in the lantern show and I don't think that would happen. Obviously if he became Parallax and it was important that way but I definitely think they're flirting with the idea of this. Other than that what else could this ancient mystery be? But I do think with Hal Jordan's age, I see why people are kind of thinking, okay, well, maybe that is whereabouts his arc could be in the DCU, bearing in mind the very teases of the show that we're aware of with this ancient threat. Now, how does this really connect to Batman? Because, you, you know, Bobby, you talked about that earlier a little bit. Well, here's the thing I guess we need to now talk about, because I've seen this discourse happen over the past couple of days since this news came out, and people do have a point. And that is the ages of a lot of heroes that we know in the DCU, which I don't have a problem with, by the way, because you have to come back to... This is a living, breathing DC universe and where heroes exist and have existed. And so a lot of these heroes that have existed, like Hal Jordan, have been active for a minute. And not just Hal Jordan. He's not the only dude in his 40s. This relates to Batman because for a long time, you know, people have been like, how old is Batman really going to be? Some other people are like, who cares? It doesn't really matter even if you had a 43-year-old playing the character. It doesn't mean they're actually that age in universe. They could still be in their 30s in universe. Yeah, I completely agree. But the thing is, uh, this eagle-eyed viewer here said James Gunn just liked this post about um, both Bruce Wayne and Talia Al Ghul being older in the DCU. So this thread user said, I like the diverse age range for the DCU heroes so far. There is no reason for everyone to be the same age. I, I agree, especially with the premise of how... You know, we're, we're not starting off with origin movie number one. No, these series have been doing their thing for a long time. So hopefully we'll get some older women in prominent roles too. I certainly expect both Bruce and Talia to be older, considering they'll already be parents in The Brave and the Bold. Keep it going, James Gunn, and Gunn liked it. Now, Gunn liking that doesn't mean that, oh yeah, yeah, Bruce and Talia are going to be actually quite older than what most people think. He could just be liking it because she tagged him and she's complimenting the kind of concept of the ages and everything that he's going for so far. But I will say it does make sense. And I've said this as well. I wouldn't rule out 40s for Bruce Wayne. I know some of you are going to kind of like uh, clap back at me there, especially with actually what Gunn has said before with regards to, you know, I've never said that Superman uh, is going to be the same age or Batman's going to be younger than Superman. I, I said he might be a couple of years older. Or s that I'm paraphrasing, but he said that with regards to Superman and Batman's age differences. But if there's one thing we know about Gunn, I'm not saying he's an outright uh, chronic liar or anything, but I do, I wouldn't take you know, tweets or responses like that so literally, I don't think that means, okay, well, David Cornsweet is like uh, early 30s, so that means Batman is going to be, well, you said a couple. That means, what, one, two, two years older. He's going to be exactly two years old. I really wouldn't take it as gospel like that. I, I think, um, I think Batman will be, I've always said, at my most generous casting guesstimation with where we're at in The Brave and the Bold and Batman's career with Damien coming in, it is possible to do it with making him 35 to 36, with condensing some chronology down um, in terms of Robin training, maybe making it a little bit smaller. It is possible to keep Bruce in his 30s, but really, with Damien Wayne coming along, he should be in his 40s, but maybe you could push it down to like 36 to 38 years old. That's not two years older than David Corrin Sweat, but... It is old enough to where it's like, you know what, maybe they could do something like this. And then you look at Gunn liking this comment here, and you just look at the other ages of people in the DCU. Okay, you want, shall we look at it again and compare it to what Batman could be? Hal Jordan, 43 to 49. Peacemaker, 46. Guy Gardner, 53. Mr. Terrific. 45 years old. Um, John Stewart, I guess, is going to be younger, 27 to 35. David Corrin Sweat, the same. Um, Jaime Reyes, of course. Blue Beetle is going to be younger. But the majority of them are over 40. So, you know, it, it, I do think it's still something that you guys shouldn't rule out that Batman could. I'm not saying he is, but I'm just saying don't close the door. Leave it slightly ajar in your minds for, you know, actually imagine a Deadline article comes out and there's like a 40-something-year-old playing Batman. 
I don't have as big of an issue about it as many other people do. There's many capable actors who can, yes, still carry out an 8-10 to 10 year plan as Batman, look youthful. Don't forget that they get, they get stunt doubles in to do all the Batman stuff and make him look good. So as long as they've got their hair and makeup on, they still... I mean, look at Jensen Ackles still looking in his 30s despite being 43, 44. Do you know what I mean? Like, there really isn't a big issue there. I know some people do make a good point, though. At some point in your 40s, you could actually quite dramatically age. It can be quite unkind to you uh, at some point in time. And that could be maybe an awkward thing. If you're, if you're meant to carry out an 8-10 to year plan as one of the most popular characters, Batman. But, you know, I, I still don't think it's as much of a risk as some people are thinking. Um, especially when, again, you look at all the other DC castings out there. And <laughs> Mr. Terrific to Metamorpho to Guy Gardner, Howard Jordan, everyone like that is like 43 plus. It's kind of crazy. So, you know, when you think about it logically like that, you're like, okay... Well, everything we know about Batman, why would he be 33? Why would he be 34? Like, no. I'm not saying he's going to be 43, but I, it really does make me think, nah, like, he's not going to be David Corrinsweat's age. I don't think he'll even be two years older. I default back to what I've said. My most generous casting for Batman's age. I could be wrong about this, so feel free to clip it. It would be interesting to compare notes in the future um, to what I've been saying now. But 36 to 38 is the youngest I think they could go, unless they severely kind of adapted things quite a bit differently with regards to canonically and chronologically building out his Bat family and how long they, he trained them for, which I guess is they, they can do. But if we're not being so generous here and went off the expectations of seeing other castings and just knowing where Bruce is at anyway... Um, well, yeah, I, I wouldn't be surprised if somebody of Jensen Ackles' age was cast as Batman, like 43, 42. And again, um, it doesn't really matter because they could still be like 38 years old in universe. So I've talked about that a bunch before, but I think it's interesting to consider and go back into this conversation again. When you see the characters' ages of the existing heroes that we're having to work with, with just the exception of Blue Beetle and maybe Jon Stewart, um, you know, that everyone is, and they're all in their 40s. But guys, I've been rambling for long enough in this news roundup, uh, but there's been quite a bit to talk about, so please pour out the discourse down in that comment section. Let me know anything and everything. I'll keep an extra close eye on this one, be interacting with you guys, so honestly, Looking forward to seeing what you guys have to say. If you've made it to this point of the video, would really appreciate your like. Help me uh, uh, deal with the wisdom tooth support. Every like gives me one anti-inflammatory dose to uh, sorting this BS out. And uh, consider subscribing for more videos just like this. If you're interested uh, on the off chance in my review for Star Wars Acolyte, first two episodes, I did do a video on that on Wednesday, so check that out. But until next time, ladies and gentlemen, uh, thank you again so much for your support. I hope you have a lovely rest of your day, and I'll see you people of the DCU in the next video. Goodbye.